All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Demco Knives Arminger 4, as I hold it even closer to the camera. But not only are we talking about the Arminger 4, we're also going to be comparing it to what I feel are some comparable, comparable knives to this blade. Not only in size, but in materials and namely price point. And to kind of talk about what I think this knife excels at. Now, to be fair, this isn't necessarily my favorite knife for like bushcrafting and survival, partly because I've kind of conflicted with this knife. It's a four inch blade as the name implies. So you guys can see there, that's how much of it sticks past my, the palm of my hand, which is a usually a good reference marker. You want something a little bit larger than the palm of your hand for most bushcrafting applications. But when it comes to actual survival applications, you typically want something a little bit more in the at least five and a half inch range. So we're talking like this is my um, AK knives or architect knives 6.5. And so this is a, a definitely like field knife slash survival knife. And you guys can see there goes well past my um, home. So it's definitely a larger knife, whereas the Arminger is definitely a smaller knife. So this is definitely more in the bushcrafting territory, but it also has a top guard, which because this is rubberized, you could probably take it off fairly easily, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So like I said, it's a little bit of a smaller knife, definitely putting it more towards the bushcrafting or, you know, small compact field knife kind of range. However, it is worth noting when you take a look at things like the Condor Pterosaur, the Mora Garberg, you can see that this does stack up pretty comparably. So as far as like it's concerned with knives in its range, price range, size range, quality range, it does stack up. It's not a, you know, a vastly or drastically smaller knife. It might be on the smaller end, you know, like the Pterosaur just ever so slightly edges it out, but not in a realistic or meaningful way. So size aside, I, some things that I do really like about this knife. So first off, it does have a decent thickness. It comes in at about around an eighth of an inch thick. Once again, comparable. I think it's a little bit thicker than the Pterosaur. I don't know. It's, it's, I'd say it's maybe a little bit thicker, if not the same size. It's kind of deceptive because this does have like a truck bed lining coating over it. So obviously when you have a thicker um, coating, it's going to disguise the thickness of the blade, but it is around that eighth of an inch thick, which is a decent size, especially for, you know, competitive options. But one of, the, one of the things I do think really helps the Arminger is the fact that it has a rubberized handle. It's also worth noting as a slight aside, this is full tang, just like the rest of these guys. There is this kind of trend, hopefully you guys can see here, you know, this trend of making knives that have kind of like the tang stick out the back of it. So you guys can see there, similar to the Pterosaur, similar to the uh, Garberg, it does have a little bit of its tang sticking out. But like I was gonna say, the biggest thing that I do really like about this knife is the fact that it has a very grippy rubberized handle. Now this is a little bit stiffer. It's worth noting than um, the traditional like uh, rubberizing of the free rain. Sorry, you guys can see there the free rain definitely has more of that cold steel kind of rubberizing to it. So cold steel uses, you know, pretty much just a straight rubberized handle on things like their SRK, their Master Hunter, their Recon Tonto, um, their and then of course, Demco uses a lot of the same manufacturers as Cold Steel. So the free rain has that very similar rubberized grip. So this is a little bit of a harder grip, but it is still fully rubberized and it is super grippy. In addition, what I like, and something that I've never actually seen on this rubberized texture before is actually like milling or cutting into it. So you guys can see there, hopefully that there is kind of that um, like textured pattern as it's cutting through the layers. But what this does is similar to the Gerber strong arm, but in a better way, it actually makes, you know, slight indentations where your index finger and where your pinky are going to land in the handle. And why that's useful is if you guys have ever held things, the um, pinky and the index finger, of course, are shorter fingers by and large. So when you wrap your hands around something, having a smaller or thinner um, material in those areas allows you to have a reasonably even grip across the board. So you guys can kind of see here, you know, when you grab something, your fingers kind of align. Whereas if you had a thicker or you know, full thickness material, your pinky would come up short, your index finger would come up a little bit short. Usually this isn't a huge issue, but it's nice to see a designer thinking of those things and anticipating that reality of biophysiology and mechanics. So I like that. Um, as far as the 
the upper guard goes to. Once again, I'm not a huge fan of it, but the things that are nice about it, because it's rubberized and it's reasonably thick, it is not uncomfortable if your thumb ends up resting on it. And it is because it's not very large. It's not like a huge um, like front guard or upper guard. It is very easy for your thumb to bypass it and hold the knife in a normal unobstructed manner. So it is not hard to bypass and you know continue to hold the knife as you normally would. So other things I do like about this, it is ADCRV2, which I find in my opinion to be comparable. Um, as we've talked about with other knives, such as the Winkler um, Blue Ridge Hunter here, this is not a knife that I like to see ADCRV2 in because this is a drastically more expensive knife. When we put it up against something like the Armager 4, you guys can see here, not trying to pull any punches, this is holding them pretty equally. The Armager 4 is just a little bit bigger. This is also a massively cheaper knife. This is about a $69 knife. That's what I paid for mine. Um, and so this is a knife where I think, or in my opinion, I believe ADCRV2 to be nominally just fine. If a knife is under $100 and uses ADCRV2, in my opinion, that's just fine. A knife that is over $300 that's using ADCRV2 is something that I dislike. So I don't want it to come off like in the past, if you guys have watched previous videos, you know that I don't really love ADCRV2, but in a budget offering, something like this knife or um, other ones that are like the Vera Strelica, um, Scrama, and the Tarava Puko, those are knives that are sub hundred dollar, once again, knives that use ADCRV2. And so I don't have issues with more budget knives using that steel. It's just when you start paying over a hundred, hundred fifty dollars for a knife that's using the steel, I feel like it is a bit of a ripoff. So for me, I don't really have an issue with the steel. Things that you'll expect with ADCRV2 over other competitive offerings like the Condor Terrasaur and the Mora Garberg that both use 1095 high carbon is that you are going to see by and large better shock resistance and better um, toughness out of the steel, but you are going to sacrifice some edge retention because this has significantly or noticeably lower carbon content in it, but it does have, um, trying to remember more chromium, just a little bit more chromium. So hypothetically more corrosion resistance, but probably not. And um, yeah, so it's just a little bit uh, better. And it has, of course, some trace amount of vanadium in it too. So that helps with the crystalline structure of the steel and gives it a little bit better toughness. So once again, it's not really enough chromium to make it like a rust resistant steel. In the past, I've said that like, in my opinion, from what I see of the data sheets, uh, the most similar thing or most comparable thing that ADCRV2 is comparable to is like a lower carbon version of 1095 Crovan, which once again, 1095 Crovan is primarily a proprietary steel used by K-Bar and a lot of their knives that adds chromium and vanadium into the 1095 mix. And what that does is it's not really enough chromium to make the knife more stain resistant, but it just adds a little bit more stability because vanadium and chromium are going to help form better crystalline structures in your steel and give your carbon a little bit better reinforcement. So it's going to make, once again, a more shock resistant, more tough steel. It's going to hopefully hold an edge longer, but also once again, be more shock resistant. So um, once again, you'll probably see a little bit less edge retention, ADCRV2 as opposed to 1095, but um, that is of course hypothetical. And there's multiple factors that factor into that. Of course, heat treat, blade geometry are just a few. So anyways, when it comes down to it, what do I think of this blade in comparison to things like the Terrasaur or the Garberg? For the most part, I think it's pretty comparable. I don't know if I'd go out and buy an Armager 4 over a Terrasaur, especially because the Terrasaur is about a 40 to 40 dollar knife, whereas the Armager 4 is about a $70 knife. So you are seeing a noticeable price step up. But when we're talking about it in comparison to the Garberg, it gets a little bit more even because this is a $68 knife versus this is a $69 knife. Now, the biggest thing that I will say, the biggest advantage, the Armager has is its sheath. I think the sheath, not only does it look pretty cool, but it is a multi-mount sheath. Whereas when you look at things like the Terrasaur, and mine is a little bit harder to see here because I have it all paracorded up because I use this in a different application. But essentially this is just a 
tube of plastic, right? So there's not really any way that you can mount this sheath without doing something like you see here. There's not really anything that you can do to mount this sheath to things like molly webbing. You can't really make this a um, scout styled uh, carry option and looking at the Garberg sheath this is essentially what the pterosaur sheath looks like because I just haven't put paracord on this guy so you do have a little belt loop here and of course to be fair the pterosaur did come with a similar belt loop but uh, you have a belt loop there but outside of that you got your drainage holes and this is realistically all you have so if you wanted to make this a multi-mount compatible sheath like truly you'd have to pretty much wrap it in paracord and do some fancy tricks to kind of jerry-rig it into that whereas when you look at the armager 4 sheath of course stock it comes with the little clasp and belt loop as you guys can see there but of course you can pop this off very easily and then you are left with these slots and of course the screws themselves to make this a multi-mount sheath so if you want to run this scout style you can run this very easily as a scout style sheath um, if you want to run this in or on a type of vest or any kind of rigging, you want to rig this to the side of your you know, backpack, you can do that very easily. And of course, once again, you can ditch this uh, belt loop with a little snap and just run it in its retention. And also too, to its credit, this is a you know, pretty strong retention. It doesn't have like a huge amount of retention, but this is the type of knife that, you know, put this upside down not going to shake out. So there's that. And then of course, the last advantage to the sheath is it is completely ambidextrous due to the ambi nature of this knife as a whole with its, you know, guard and stuff. Um, this does just fine. So in my opinion, the greatest strength of the knife um, for its price point is it has a very solid sheath. Outside of that, it's pretty much similar to your Garbergs, to your Pterosaurs. Um, one advantage it does have over the Pterosaur, of course, is it's coated, unlike the uncoated version of the Pterosaur. But once again, if you have some Casey's Gun Blue or Birchwood Casey Gun Blue, you can take care of that pretty quickly. But aside from that, you have um, the competitive option of the Garberg, I think is like the next most competitive option. And it's pretty darn good. Uh, I would say the Armager is pretty darn good in comparison. I really do love the uh, rubberized grip to it. I think that's cool. Um, and I really don't have any complaints on it. And I really wanted to add it um, partially because I've been impressed with Demco's knives so far. I have a Demco um, free reign, as you guys can tell there. And uh, I have a handful of other Demco folding knives, so I thought it'd be nice to add the Armager 4 because I think it is a really good semi-budget uh, field knife as a whole. Once again, not my favorite for bushcrafting per se, but it is certainly competitive with others, and I look forward to being able to make some pretty cool content. Of course, I'm going to be putting it up and doing a field test direct comparison with the Garberg and probably the Pterosaur for that matter because they are all very similar. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless. And